a little after seven. Does everyone have coffee that, that wants coffee? All right. We are ready to start. I need an agenda. Thank you. I knew I was forgetting something. We will start out with mayor comments. I have a few uh, proclamations to start out with. And I apologize. Uh, last meeting, I did not get to uh, announce our proclamation to recognize National Police Week. Chief Hartzell is here tonight. I do have a proclamation regarding that, and I'll go ahead and read that. To recognize National Police Week 2012 and to honor the service, service and sacrifice of those law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty while protecting our communities and safeguarding our democracy. Whereas there are approximately 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the Buffalo Police Department. Whereas some 60,000 assaults against law enforcement officers are reported each year, resulting in approximately 16,000 injuries. Whereas since the first recorded death in 1792, over 19,000 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and have been killed in the line of duty. Whereas the names of those dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., whereas the names of fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 163 officers killed in 2011 and 160 officers killed the previous year. Whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty will be honored during National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 24th Annual Candlelight Vigil on the evening of Friday, May 18, 2012. Whereas the Candlelight Vigil is part of the National Police Week, which takes place this year on May 13th through the 19th. Apologize, we're late. Whereas May 15th is designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Buffalo, Missouri formally designates May 13th through 19th, 2012 as Police Week in Buffalo, Missouri and publicly salutes the service of law enforcement officers in our community and communities across the nation. Chief Parcel. This has a proclamation to you. Thank you very much. And thank you for your service. Sure. Sure. I have another proclamation for Relay for Life. I have a few ladies that are here tonight from the Relay, is that correct? Yes. Would you ladies like to stand up and introduce yourself to everyone? We have a big meeting here tonight. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm Patsy Kerr, and I'm the Relay for Life chairperson of Dallas County. And I'm Donna Wilson. I'm on the committee. All right. I personally want to thank you for your endeavors. Uh, there are a lot of people who call City Hall and complain about problems. Uh, these are the people who call and complain. These aren't the people who formulate solutions. These aren't the people who figure out why things are bad. They simply call and complain. Relay for Life is very active. I believe we're one of the most active uh, rural chapters in the state of Missouri. Is that correct? Yes. We've been a five-star relay the last two years. And last year, we were the only one in our region. You are to be commended for your efforts. I do have a proclamation. I would like to read that. Whereas Relay for Life is the signature activity of the American Cancer Society and honors cancer survivors, anyone who has ever been diagnosed with cancer, and remembers those lost to the disease. And whereas the money raised during the American Cancer Society Relay for Life in Dallas County helps support research, education, advocacy, and patient services. And whereas Relay for Life helps fund more than $100 million in cancer research each year. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Andrew Mead, Mayor of Buffalo, Missouri, do here, hereby proclaim June 1st through June 9th, 2012, as Relay for Life Week in Buffalo and encouraging citizens to participate in Relay for Life of Dallas County in the Buffalo City Square on June 8th. Again, I thank you for your service, uh, not only to your cause, but our community. It's refreshing to know that there are people willing to stand up and work for what they see as their duty, as opposed to sitting on the couch and spending two and a half minutes to call and complain. Thank you for your service. And I present to you this, care, uh, this proclamation. Thank you, sir.
pretty much wraps up my mayor comments. I thank everyone for coming this evening. Uh, we'll move on to the first thing on our agenda, our soccer concession building. Uh, we are moving quite along, moving along quite well. Uh, I'll let Mr. Piper give us a quick update on that. I just drove that with a plan for the building, and then uh, when I gave it to you, he called Taylor Mason here, and he gave us a three thousand dollars price on laying all the top walls. Okay. Because, and I've not got a list of all the prices for the rest of the material here, but we know that all the top walls is a major portion of the structure of the building. Okay. Three thousand dollars. I'm thinking we're looking at maybe between fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. So, uh, and we're talking uh, for the public, uh, fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars approximately to build a nice structure at the new soccer fields that will house a uh, ladies' room, men's room, uh, storage facility, and concession stand. So, at our uh, soccer fields at the new park, we'll have what they call fancy indoor uh, plumbing uh, uh, featured in the Beverly Hill Village. Uh, it'll be a, a block building. Uh, the inside will be constructed of wood. Uh, and it'll have, a, I believe, a shingle roof. Is that correct? Trusses and shingles and trusses. Okay. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, Charlie Strick will give us a bid probably for around ten thousand dollars if we go from the eight, 350 foot easement down. Right. Rather than the other one, whichever you decide. Yeah, and, and that's something we're going to have to look at. And these bids are kind of preliminary. Yeah. We'll have to go through the formal bidding process. I believe if it's over a Debbie, am I correct? Six thousand dollars. We have to publish uh, solicitations for bids. If it's under four, uh, I can approve it uh, upon finding, uh, making three calls and, and soliciting three bids. If it's between three and six, uh, the board will need to vote based on solicited bids. My last recollection of the law, but we'll certainly, uh, as always, follow the law and uh, look to build something uh, that's cost-effective for us. Uh, we could easily bid it out to a third party that might come in from Kansas City or come in from Tulsa and pay twice as much what we're going to uh, plan on spending uh, doing it in-house and using local contractors. And also we could annex that subdivision if they want to be annexed to that way. Down the road. And I'll explain to the public we have two routes of getting sewer to that. We can either go to the north with a smaller line or we can go to the east with a larger line. Uh, the problem with going to the east is there's a creek there. Anytime you want to put sewer uh, underneath the creek, you get the state uh, and or federal government involved, and they're not the happiest critters to deal with. Um, uh, we've contacted DNR about that. DNR says you'll have our blessing if you have the blessing of the Army Corps of Engineers. We've since called the Army Corps of Engineers, and they say this is a little project, and they gave us a thumbs up. So we have the capacity of running a sewer line due east. Uh, uh, on the southern side of the uh, soccer fields underneath the creek and connecting in with the sewer main, the gravity main that runs to the, the sewer plant. Uh, we can also, from that point, uh, where we'd run it to where the proposed location uh, for the restrooms at the, the, the soccer fields, we can continue to run west uh, from there. And uh, if the city were to decide they wanted to annex the subdivision just south of there, or keep moving west uh, for future growth in that area, we would at least have that infrastructure set up and we would be looking forward to the future. Uh, we're about 900 and some odd feet going to the north of Small Pipe. Uh, we're about 333, 350 feet going to the east of Larger Pipe uh, under that creek. Uh, right now we're just doing a little bit of feasibility and numbers crunching and figuring out uh, what's the best uh, course. When we have all the facts in, uh, we'll certainly present those facts to the board, and uh, the board will have uh, uh, at least uh, some opinion on which direction we should come from and uh, what bids we have to approve and disapprove and move forward with construction. Are there any questions regarding the uh, soccer concession or restrooms uh, at the new park and the soccer team? I have one question. Yes, sir. Jim, are your drawings providing for a small air conditioner in there for the... <laughs> Uh, that one exhaust fan, put it in the ladies' wing. No, I mean in the concession. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
exhausted the ladies. Just one exhaust and then the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Reeves, you're not going to be working in sessions during the summer months, are you? Maybe. 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 See and need fill and All right, annual asphalt, we have uh, asphalt bids, is that correct? Or did we I need... put it back on the agenda because you guys wanted to discuss it. From the regular meeting, you had talked about looking at not spending the $300,000. That's correct, that's correct. Uh, one of our aldermen uh, went with uh, Roger. Uh, who was that? Mr. Did, did you? Uh, I was never contacted. Okay. Mr. Stafford, did you go? I spoke with Chess. Okay. And gentlemen, what did you conclude? Well, we've got some asphalt streets here, so I think they almost need to be shaved off. They're rounded way too high. Sometimes you've got to just quit throwing asphalt on top of it. So Roger has only got, basically, we've got to do Alberta Street. For those people out there, they've got to get, they've got to get there. Uh, Roger had a couple of small streets that he wanted to do. I can't, I don't recall. But he wanted to cut that down outside of Alberta Street to almost nothing. So that, uh, I mean, these, even the street out here is crowned. And Maple Street's really crowned, but Maple Street, due to the fact that it is a state highway down the middle, city streets on the side, whenever the city, whenever the state asphalted, they just did the middle and had the sidewalk. So it's a completely crowned. But I think, I think that it's, it's time to save as much money on that asphalt and quit just putting asphalt on top of asphalt. It's time to start thinking about seal coating and save what we've got versus asphalt on top of it. $300,000 worth of asphalt is a lot of tons. Mr. Brown, what's your opinion? I don't, I, I'll do better if I don't know. I want to contact it. But Jess has got a point about that. The crown's way high on a lot of streets, way high. And I, and I think as you asphalt each layer, it's not as wide as the one before. <laughs> There's got to be a better solution. So, so let's let's kick it around a little bit. I think we have to kick around and find out exactly what Alberta Street is going to cost versus the three hundred thousand we had budgeted. But that's got to be done. They're not even a question. Most people out there paying taxes for seven or eight years got nothing in return. They're, they're entitled to a good street. Roger's got He's got the base on it ready to go, so we just have to uh, reevaluate it, rebid it. Let's see how many dollars it's talking about. We've talked about uh, taking and building a little bit of a parking lot on Maple Street uh, to pick up about a seven car parking space about a 30 by 70 asphalt. You know, some place we're going to have to do that. But we just got to back off and not, not think about the 300 until we reevaluate and see exactly where we're going to spend the money. Any other opinions or thoughts on that? <clears throat> okay. Um, number four on our agenda is not uh, marked. Uh, we do have the uh, green space. Uh, matter that we discussed last time uh, to, to be uh, considered for a vote to, to allocate funds from the road department for, a, I guess, a feasibility study. And uh, Mr. Coltrane is here. Uh, would you like to speak to the green space uh, and, and uh, what that might possibly do for our community? Sure. The, the study that we're looking at, uh, the Greenway would run all the way through town along Mill Street. Uh, but the main part of the study is to look at the uh, stormwater problem south of uh, 32 Highway because that has to be drained first. And so look at how big of a channel it takes to handle that stormwater to move it northward. And then look at how big a, a channel needs to be developed to move from north of 32 up to Main Street and then how big a channel it would take to get from there all the way out, out through the park and out to the uh, uh, basically the treatment 
plant area by 65. And so the study looks at uh, two things. It looks at the size of the stormwater capacity to help relieve the existing stormwater problems in town. It also looks at the ability to place a trail alongside those improvements and create the greenway system along with it. And then it also looks at uh, talking to some of the property owners as far as the MoDOT and Dallas County and some others uh, because the, the majority of the ones that already are that are property owners uh, we have several people that are already committed to work with the city on this project, so uh, it's it's farther along than most uh, trail and stormwater improvement projects would ever be, just uh, because of the nature where the land lies and the few property owners that it takes to get through it. So the people so far have, have been very cooperative, and, and so the next step is to get these questions answered so that grants and everything can be applied for and try to move the project forward. Will the intersection of Hickory and Mill be looked at? All the all the road crossings from Main Street on to the north have to be evaluated and, and safe <coughs> crossings and developed both for the stormwater and for the bicycle pedestrian people. And then uh, 32 South of 32 has to be looked at also as how to improve the drainage ways south of there to get that water out of the southern part of town. So. Okay. Uh, is this uh, is this study something that would would help us to get a grant uh, down the road? Yes. And in order to get grants, you have to have several answers in place, and this helps put check marks beside those questions that the grant people will have, and it also develops your paperwork as far as who the uh, cooperating agencies would be in this overall project. Okay. And we do have a grant opportunity coming up in, in just under a year, is that correct? We have one coming up this fall and then one in about 11 months. Okay, so it's possible we could have several grants that would cover uh, a project of the scope and magnitude. It, it, it would definitely help to get the project moving, yes. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Cole? How much does the grants generally pay? The the one this fall has a hundred thousand uh, dollar max on it, and the one next spring also has a hundred thousand dollar maximum. Mm -hmm. <coughs> What's the status of the uh, we, we went over some preliminary plans this afternoon, and the final plans uh, will be, to me, no later than Thursday. Is that correct? Yes. So we'll be ready to break ground. I believe we're going to be conducting interviews uh, for uh, city employees uh, that will be working on that uh, interviews sometime, uh, I believe, Friday morning, if we can schedule those. So we're, we're well on our way to ground break. Any, any questions on the Locust Street project? That was a problem. I see. Um, that, in, that, that concludes our regular meeting. Um, we do have a. Uh, we have a few or something. Oh, we do. You want to talk about that? Sure, sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before you start that, did we, I mean, are we going to, um, I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and proceed with this feasibility study. I, did we, um, yeah, we, I mean, we had we, discussed last, um, at our last meeting, what, what was the amount that you said seven it would to cost 10, for a feasibility, what was that? Seven to ten thousand. Seven to ten thousand. I mean, we can't even get started until we, we okay that. Okay. And, and regardless whether or not we end up having a green space through there, just um, having some, you know, good solid ideas on what we can do for the, the watershed problem, that's a problem that has to be addressed no matter what. I mean, it's not, we're not going to lose, it's for investing in our city. Throwing concrete in the ditch has worked up until now. But, uh, well, not really. <laughs> uh, are you making a motion? That I would like to make a motion that we would um, dedicate funds from the road 
uh, transportation fund yes. to the feasibility study? Yes. And how much Up are you to asking? 10, okay. I think that would be. Is there a second to? Is there a second to uh, this morning's motion? I'll say. Uh, do we have our roll call? For I do. Let me get in here and get that done. Christy. Aye. James. Aye. Wayne. Aye. Larry. Aye. Jess. Aye. Jim. Aye. That motion has passed. Uh, up to ten thousand dollars will be allocated for a feasibility study uh, for waterways that would run uh, current or uh, alongside the uh, proposed uh, green space. Can you now do it for seven if you can? <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured that's what you would want, Wayne. So. <laughs> Wayne has going to ask for five. <laughs> okay, uh, we do have uh, uh, a couple of bids here uh, for, from Mr. Stafford. Uh, and it, we may be a little uh, bit premature on these bids. Uh, Debbie, do we need to put this uh, open uh, in the paper, or do I need? To, do we need to call around and see if we can get any matching bids? Or? I didn't even keep a copy of them. I mean, your ordinance says that you'll take bids if it's over six thousand dollars. Okay. So we um, may not have to solicit bids for. Uh, I gave Martha the original, and I just didn't keep the copy. Um, so, I mean, under four thousand dollars, you can solicit three bids. So, if the board authorizes the project, you could just solicit bids. Uh, under four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're they're. I pulled the ordinance while you were asked about it earlier. Okay. So we we could approve <coughs> these tonight. Or approve the allocation of funds. They could approve the allocation of the funds, and then you would need to try to get three bids to okay. meet the ordinance requirements for bidding. And I'm sure Gary's probably going to be the cheapest, but let's uh, solicit bids uh, to comply with our laws. Does the board want to allocate uh, an amount of funds uh, that may reflect something close to what this estimate is? Uh, okay. I'll uh, solicit bids and uh, and I'll present those uh, to the board. Uh, uh, at our next Jim, did you is the beacon light working? No, it is not. It was working. It has not worked since the last night of April when the man gave up the. Airport building there and walk the other one down to the, the, by the uh, asphalt plant. I'm assuming that the electric company took his meter out there and took it down there. It does not work in May at all. That's a brand new unit. And I'm assuming that I'm assuming that that, uh, that beacon was on the meter that uh, that guy had the airport building leased, not on cities. That's what I'm guessing. Because of him, what he transferred there down a bit, what he bought the other hanger down, you know, and there weren't any more today. So we've been using someone else's power. I think I think the power was on the one that the meter that the man had the airport really leased. Okay. And, and I think I'm guessing I'm guessing that it was on the wrong meter to begin with. What would it take to make that beacon work? The electricity to it. Uh -huh. Is on the wrong meter, yes. <laughs> I think. Is that what it's <laughs> That's a brand new unit. I was down there this morning. Did you ever look at that tower? <laughs> they're down there. They're, they're when I came up here. It's got some bolts in it that are about six inches that just tapped on both ends here and stuck in the middle. When I left the house at 25 or 6, they were on top of the tower tonight. Tonight. It had no Excuse me. Sure. Mr. Beach has got. I missed what these bits were for. I don't think it was ever mentioned in that. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, yeah, we have we have a, a, a building uh, out of the airport that that's fallen in disrepair and needs a coat of paint. Thank you. Mr. Beach has got a new motor for that. It needs another new one. It just it's all it, it was only put up for February the twenty eighth. I it got it down to the day put it up there. It was put up the day we had totally to out here to put everything away. And it worked that night, without that particular night, when the toilet was put the power out. I've got the record of it. 
if we're going to have an airport, don't we need a building? Oh, you ought to get electricity to it. It's far to the wrong meter, I'm, I'm guessing. Well, it wouldn't take much to uh, get a hold of our uh, electrician and, and uh, see if you can get out there and uh, get that right. Because I see it every night, that's not working. It hasn't worked in the month of May at all. Because he planned, he left that <coughs> last part of April and he went down to the, the new airport they've done there and dropped that, that hangar down there. I'm assuming they took a leader out there and get down there and that, that killed it. I'm assuming that. I can't prove that. Well, that I look at it every day. Part of these, I think part of these had that meter there because he donated it to the tower. There's two meters there. Okay. One for the city, one for the way, and the other is for the building. Okay. The, 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 where you store this, you can play in there, the cash works. Let's get it wired in the right place. I'm, I'm guessing that I can't prove that. I think that's what it is. I'll ask Ms. Folsom to uh, contact our uh, electrician tomorrow. I've actually given it to the city clerk because she normally deals with the electric company if there needs to be a switch there. So okay, thank you. I have her a no bro. Mr. Mayor, check into it. Yes, sir. Driving up here tonight, I noticed for the first time, and I may be the last one in Buffalo to have noticed it, over on Bryce Bradley's old building. And I was amazed. Christy tells me that the gentleman that did that is sitting on the front row. And I would like to personally tell him that has done more than anything I've seen late to enhance buffer. Thank you. said this at, at, at the art walk the reason that we, our lives uh, have color uh, otherwise without a little bit of beauty in things uh, life is just dull and drab and I'm at a loss for words but I, I thank you for your efforts and, and I hope uh, that you have a continuing and continual and uh, continuous impact on our community thank you are we ready to uh, entertain a motion to go into a closed meeting? I would make a motion that we go into a closed session, uh, session under section such and such, to discuss personnel and real estate. And real estate. Is Before we do, I'd like to know if your 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 closed session is going to be about your report. No, no, I will make that statement. No, it's not going to be about your reports. No, I told him, Mr. Hartzell. Saturday morning at 8 o'clock that it would not be brought up. Is that not right, Sam? Yeah. Saturday night. Regardless, I said it wouldn't be showed if it wouldn't be brought up. Normally when I tell you something, put it in the bank. And that's exactly what I said. It will not be brought up. Now, I'm not saying we may not have some problems, but Sam's problem will not be brought up. It's the best thing to do. Well, I just want, I want the board to know that we're here as both private citizens as people that help in our community. And we stand behind the chief, what he's done, what he's accomplished. If there's, if we've got some people that make complaints, we got a hundred people that'll stand by next to him. And he stood shoulder to shoulder in a tornado with us. Blood, sweat, and tears were, were had. He was right there with us all the time. He's worked for the city, he works hard for it. And we're prepared to stand with him and defend him if we have to. Appreciate that. Or a second to that one. I'll second that. Debbie, did you follow the roll for vote? Jim? Aye. Yes. Jess? Aye. Larry? Aye. Christy? Aye. James? Aye. Wayne? Aye. All right, take a five minute brief recess. <laughs>